Given how powerful this function is, it's so rarely used. Let's change that, shall we? Pull the trigger. Triggers can be used to add interactivity to your slides. For example, to create buttons for pop-up information. You might have a menu of topics, only some of which are relevant to any given audience. So rather than show all the details, choose each time by clicking on the heading and revealing just the appropriate information. That way, you won't overwhelm people with too much and show just enough. How does this work? Well, it's just a setting in the animation functions for each object. Once you have your content laid out and animate everything as you normally would, just simple entrance animations are fine for now, select the objects that you want to bring up on a click and right click on their animations in the animation pane. Choose timing and at the bottom of the pop-up window you'll see triggers hidden away there. Click on it and reveal two options. The default is to trigger the animation as part of the regular click sequence but you can also choose to trigger the animation when you click on a specific object on the slide. The drop-down gives you a list of all the objects, so for the first set of details that relate to presentation creation, I want them to come in when I click on that box. Choose OK, and now you'll see the animations for those detail boxes appear in a new section at the bottom of the animation pane, showing that they're going to be triggered by clicking the presentation creation box. For the second set of details, you do exactly the same, so select the animations, right click on them, choose timing, and then the trigger functions. In the trigger items list, if the object is a text box, it will have the text in the name, making it easier to find. But if it's a standard shape or image, it will just say rectangle 42 or whatever, rather unhelpfully. At this point, it might be worth going to the selection pane, in the home tab and under arrange where you can select your intended trigger functions and rename them to make finding them easier. Finally, put the third set of details on a trigger animation for the e-learning title, and when you've done that, you're left with just three standard animations on the slide, and all the rest in the trigger function sections. So how does this now work in show mode? Well, the titles appear as normal, but then nothing else. If you click again, you go to the next slide. Go back, and if you move your mouse, you'll see it's the arrow, but move it over one of the title boxes and the cursor changes to the interactive pointing hand, showing that you have clickable content. Click on any of them and you'll then trigger the appropriate detail boxes to appear. You might only show one set before moving on to the next slide, so the audience never needs to see the rest of them if useful. For the next audience, you might show two before moving on. The idea is that it gives you a great deal of flexibility when presenting to bring up what you want.